All right, today's patch day. We've got patch notes, but more importantly, we're gonna talk about what is not inside of the patch notes. And that's right, there are no minion reworks. So one of the big questions that I'm getting back to back to back to back is what minion should I start upgrading? We're gonna talk about that in this video. But before we do that, let's have a quick message from our sponsor, Amazon Coins. Big shout out to the Amazon App Store for sponsoring this video. The Amazon App Store will allow you to save up to 20% off of all of your in-app purchases for Marvel Strike Force by using Amazon Coins. The Amazon App Store is available on all Android devices, Amazon Fire tablets, and now, this is brand new, Windows 11 devices inside of the United States. How does it work? Well, first thing you do is you buy your Amazon Coins at a discount. So typically, I will go and buy 50,000 Amazon Coins for $400. Now, 50,000 Amazon Coins translates to $500 of in-app purchases inside of Marvel Strike Force that I only paid $400 for. This is an, a tremendous savings. You follow all the instructions here on the page. You click the link in the description and then you just follow the instructions and getting it set up. You download the Amazon App Store. You download Marvel Strike Force right from the Amazon App Stores and you're set up to go. It's as simple as that. All right, one of the main things that's gonna be happening on this patch is that we are going to get Archangel. And this has been very controversial because the unlock method requires minions in the first two nodes, as well as non-legendary mutants in nodes six and seven. Now, the question is, when is the Death Scourge event going to happen? And we have a small hint uh, based off of the last blog post. We had the Herald of Death event which is starts on December 13th. And then when we go into the data mines, the data mine says uh, that this event is now live. Prepare for the Death Scourge event and make Festival of Frost progress with the snowballs during this limited time event. So a lot of people have speculated that the Herald of Death event will run the 13th through the 19th. And then possibly the Death Scourge event, which runs for 10 days, will start from the 20th through the 30th. Now, we, that is not confirmed. That is complete speculation, but uh, that event is not gonna start before uh, probably the end of the Herald of the Death event. Then, we're going to also get the War Horseman Saga. This is gonna be important because uh, this is where we're gonna get the awakened abilities for Red Hulk. We're gonna get new characters, Archangel Nemesis, US Agent Captain Carter, Agent Vettis, and uh, Titania, who, and it's probably gonna, gonna be in this order, if I were to guess, but I believe she's going to be towards the end. Now, Archangel and Nemesis, uh, the Death Horse and Archangel, and the newcomer Nemesis will join Magneto, Psylocke, Dark Beast to form a Death Seed team. who are poised to reign over raid lanes. Now, this is one of the more disappointing things in this patch, uh, that we have this, re this rebirth team, uh, which is going to be a bio raid team. And we really didn't need a bio raid team. A lot of people are very happy with the Web Warriors. Uh, I think a lot of people were more interested in a skill raid, Tim. Now, uh, Titania is going to be paired up with Ultron for a, an Ultron rework, and this is going to be a Cosmic Crucible team. I'm expecting this towards the end of the patch. Now, here's the thing. Uh, my understanding is that this is a complete team, and there are three other members to the team, so we don't have the full details of that. In fact, her kit makes reference to uh, a, a Protector, Master of Evil, which we do not have on. Ability stat improvements, and this is where we're going to get into it. This is one of probably the most disappointing thing here in the patch notes. Check out the details below for updates to Captain America, Winter Soldier, and Ultron and his minions. Absolutely no mention whatsoever of a minion rework. So, what does that mean for uh, the, the minion scourge? A lot of people are chomping at the bit to start upgrading their minions. And uh, this is a point of view right here. I just wanted to share... There's two options. Don't level up any of them and wait, but don't be mad if you can't get them ready in time, which seems like a, a low risk, actually. I don't know if that's even gonna be a real issue because you hoard and then you spend and then you upgrade them then. Or you can invest now, but don't be mad if the ones you pick aren't optimal. So here's the deal. Uh, the, the, we don't know which ones are gonna be optimal for the raid. And uh, there's going to be videos of people uh, going through it and we're gonna see how hard it is and then you can make a decision on which ones you want to upgrade. Because a lot of details we don't know. Now, I have some suggestions if you which one I'm going to upgrade. And I have some suggestions if you want to get started now. But again, don't be mad if the ones you pick aren't optimal where you could just hoard resources and wait and see 
uh, you know, and then because the event's going to be 10 days long. Now, good information here possibly is coming in from Tana. Minion required wave details, 50%, minus 50% damage on enemies. So what Tana has done here, and a uh, link to this video will be in the description, is he went into the JSON files. This is where the data miners and Tana get information from the actual code in the game. So a lot of this is subject to change. Also, this code is hard to understand, but the way that Tana is explaining it here in this video is that on the first two nodes, he's looking at the individual stats of the enemies. And like they says right here, max HP, 110%. Damage 50% and armor 90%. So what he's suggesting is that possibly uh, the, the, the characters on the first two nodes are going to have lower damage. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. We will have to wait and see. But the idea is that maybe the first two nodes won't be as bad as we're expecting. These are going to be the characters, according to the data mine, in the first two nodes. So what minions am I personally going to try first? inside of the first two nodes inside of this raid and i'm going to try the ravager minions and i'm going to try merc lieutenant and merc soldier the other two minions that i'm also interested in possibly is hand blade master and had archer they had mo uh, recent stat upgrades when you're considering what characters you should upgrade, you also want to consider the amount of red stars that you have on your character. We will have to see how that plays out. But again, uh, the, the, it's, it's kind of a mess picking out the minions. Uh, and the only reason why I'm going to do the Ravager minions first is that they did have small reworks. And a lot of people already have the Ravagers upgraded because they are a C- minus tier team inside of War Offense when paired up with Star-Lord, T'Challa, and Yondu. So uh, I still think it's best to hoard resources and wait. Uh, but I think a lot of people... Uh, want to get started now because a lot of people have no minions upgraded at all so now we're going to get to uh the unlock method for um uh, uh the new character nemesis which we're going to get we're going to get some new costumes uh doc ock sif red hulk and drax i personally like the sith and doc ock costume quite a bit red hulk not so great drax is kind of funny can't miss events uh this is going to be and this is very interesting this is uh, power up your roster for the Nemesis event campaign. Uh, Harbinger, I don't know how to say that. Harbinger, I don't know. Uh, you need a top squad of characters with a limited time trade to attempt their heroic difficulty. And here is the list of the characters uh, which are going to be used. So we're going to see how this plays out. I've got a list here somewhere. Uh, but anyways, the main thing is, is that they have changed the way that these events work. And uh, we're not sure if it's going to work like Nakia or if it's going to work like the ones of the past. So a lot of people are considering uh, this, uh, if this offer is worth it or not. I buy, I bought this offer right here just because I wanted to get him unlocked early and I started uh, upgrading him. As far as ISO 8, I'm putting Striker on him and that is going to be paired up with Dark Beast, which is Skirmisher. And as far as T4s, I'm going to put all the T4s on them, but the basic, the basic, I, I believe, is more of a luxury T4. So is it going to be worth it to unlock him early or what is going to be the unlock method? Now, here's the thing. He's going to be event campaign, which traditionally has been uh, the best, uh, most player friendly way of unlocking characters. But they changed the it with the Nakia event. And uh, most people feel like they got less than before. Some people have had the same and uh, some people said they got more. And the reason why there's variance is because there were first time, uh, first time character shard re you know, rewards on the easy nodes, but then they lowered the amount that you got in the orbs. The, the orbs were had a lower drop rates almost by one shard per orb or a 20% drop. And what I'm saying, is, I, what I feel is like the correct answer on this is that this new event style that came out for Nakia is more people got four star characters than prior events like spider weaver and so on and so on but less people got five stars so a uh, higher floor lower ceiling is probably my best guess so the other place that these shards are going to be available is in that new presence store there's a new presence store you can see it live right now in game uh right here and uh the presence store uh has characters in there like this and it's going to change 
uh, every week. And the fourth week is supposed to have Nemesis shards. So I'm personally going to be saving these presents going through the month long event. Uh, these presents will be awarded. I believe there's a total of 2.8 million. Uh, if you can max out and get the 750,000, no idea if you can get that free to play. Uh, no idea if there are going to be other ways to get it, like calendars and things like that. No idea if there's going to be offers. But what we do know is in the fourth week, there are going to be shards available. And I'm going to be saving this so that I can get shards uh, for Nemesis. Now, is Nemesis important? It looks that way. He has very high damage. I believe he's the second highest. Uh, he's like He has very good damage, uh, like in the top 10 damage in the game. And he also looks like to be an amazing healer. And uh, I, I'm pretty excited about him. Plus, he's a, a part required for Apocalypse. He's a part of a horseman team. And, th and that is that. Of course, uh, that's just my initial thoughts. Now, let's keep going on the, the blog post and see like that. Uh, how the Guardian strolled group miss. There's going to be an event where you can get uh, the Groot, uh, the Groot uh, costume as well as the Drac costume. Uh, new features, updates, and more. New hard difficulties chapters. Let's talk about this. So they're going to add difficulty hard three and four. And then they will also do for Heroes Assemble and uh, uh, Villains United. And so there are going to be new character shards in these right here. Spider-Woman, uh, Mighty Thor. I've got a list right here of the new characters, all that are all available. Let me pull that up in one moment. I've got a lot of tabs. Here we go right here. Here are, here's everything that is going to be farmable in those new nodes. Phantom X in 3-3, Scarlet Spider, Silver Samurai, Dagger, Jane Foster, and uh, Spider-Punk, Shang-Chi, Philavel, and a Venom Spider-Woman. So there's three characters that are not available anywhere that are going to be available. We don't know when they're going to allow us to get in this. Um, probably they will do one at a time. Maybe that'll happen this patch, but we don't have any official word. Uh, the good news is that we have access to Phantom X at, at some point. Jane Foster and Spider-Woman. And uh, a lot of people are saying, well, why are they putting all these other characters? I don't really know. A lot of people say, you know, wish that they had all the new characters. Like, where's Icarus, right? Like, where is Icarus, by the way? Uh, but my best guess is that they put these characters in there, uh, like Anna Venom, and then six months or a year from now, they'll replace Anna Venom with a newer character. And uh, these characters are just there for now. But so stay tuned uh, for when this is gonna happen. Uh, this is kind of an interesting, a lot of people asked a question, are looking for a more active alliance turn, more rewards, improve your roster progress, you receive an inbox with alliance recommendations if your current alliance members aren't regularly active. And I'm not sure exactly how what that means. Cosmic Crucible rewards update. Rewards have been updated across the board, including rank rewards, which will pay out better prices for fish finishing in the top two spots. Also, it's uh, worth mentioning uh, that there are now character shards available with the gold. And it looks like there's Gambit, Hulkbuster, and Abomination are the three most that I'm interested. Uh, so I will be spending uh, this uh, currency uh, on the Elite Crucible credits on these characters right here. And I think which one you should do first uh, largely has to do uh, with what kind of yellow stars you have on them. Now, for example, for me, I already have Gambit at six stars. So I'm gonna start working on Abomination and try to get him to six stars. Uh, right now, I'm pretty happy with Hulkbuster at five stars. I get through the raids just fine. Maybe I'll start working on Hulk, uh, Hulkbuster after I finish Abomination, or maybe I'll start working on Gambit. But Gambit and Abomination are my two favorite in that for sure. Uh, let's get back to the post. Squad selection improvement. Squad screen will now only show characters that fit the requirements of the content you're playing. This will make it easier for you to see what characters match the traits, including the characters that you can upgrade in the content. Improvements to support for the ultra-wide devices. Uh, we've updated many aspects to our UI layout to better support ultra-wide resolutions for devices like the Samsung Galaxy, so on and so on. We'll be providing support to the iPhone Pro Dynamic Island in the near future. Stay tuned to updates. Now, a lot of people have asked, uh, you know, why does the screen look bigger? A lot of people are saying, does everything look better? Like the uh, state in the title after starting the game, everything just looks better. I'm not complaining. Weird thing to change for no reason without announcement. And I believe this is the correct thing right here. They said in the patch note they were adjusting the displays for certain devices. I assume it's affected more than the targeted device. That's my only explanation for that. Uh, Alliance War replays. I, this was in the game briefly for like an hour or two. And it looks like they're going to actually 
uh, bring this. And I, I think this is good for uh, seeing what your alliance is doing. It's very interesting. You can now watch replays of battles from an active alliance war. This is a public beta version of the feature and is available to everyone who has an alliance war unlocked. To access the battle replay, select a helicarrier room for your active war and then select blue right player. Draft offer update. Uh, so this is for uh, like those red star offers where it says uh, get a five, six or seven red star for XYZ team. Now, when you tap the icons within the draft after you see a list of, poss of possible items and their associated drop rates, this already was a feature on the web store. And then there were some bug fixes, gave its pass passive ability was not correctly targeting. Valkyrie wasn't returning to original position. Sometimes he would switch sides and come over to the opponent's side. Uh, <laughs> who would have thought hand archer's gear stats were lowering slightly when upgrading him to gear tier 16? My goodness! In Alliance War, Red Hulk was failing to gain extra charge during certain attacks that involve multiple targets. Now, my feeling on this is that will make sacking the team easier, uh, but it'll also make one shot one shotting. Uh, the Gamma team harder. So we have to see that. Some text tabs and buttons were overlapping on ultra wide devices. So uh, hope that, I believe that's been fixed. Uh, known issues, bug display where synergies cuts off and calendars in the game have an issue with the release where the names will not appear correctly. It only affects the names of the calendars and their functionality. The names will be fixed in the next future. Now I have some other tabs. Let's go over some other information. I have to scroll along to see what else we're gonna do. Uh, the, cause, the Crucible Straw has character shards and great ones. We've already reviewed that, okay? Uh, then also we talked about the ISO on uh, uh, Nemesis. And the reason why we want Striker on him is because he uh, does 5% healing for each target, redistribute itself. And also we want to take advantage of the Skirmisher Striker combo on Dark Beast because Dark Beast has a 25% assist chance per Death Seed ally. So this is going to be just like in, uh, Infinity Watch where, uh, you know, Gamora attacks and then Nebula assists and then Gamora attacks again. So we're going to take advantage of the Skirmisher Striker combo on that team. Also, uh, kind of annoying. Uh, and I, this might be good for free-to-play players, but this is kind of a, an upcharge. There's basically uh, the strike pass that is running in game right now uh, is for two weeks. And so there's uh, the rewards. You can go in game and look like that. It runs for two weeks and you can spend $20. Now, what wasn't clear to me in the blog post is that you basically they told us a special strike pass is dashing this way this holiday to bring you big rewards for completing your daily objectives. The festive strike pass kicks off today and on a couple of two seasons. But what I guess I, I read this and I didn't understand that we're going to spend $20 for the first two weeks and then $20 for the second two weeks. Looks like it's going to be double rewards. Now, if you don't normally buy this, it looks like the rewards are going to be better uh, and, and you know throughout this month. But if you're otherwise, everybody else uh, that purchases this is going to have to spend, looks like my interpretation of this is that we're going to have to spend $20 twice. Uh, well, it covers two seasons, seasons 23 and 24. Each uh, season of the Festive Strike Pass will be two weeks long, but will include the same amount of rewards as a normal season. The first season of the Festive Strike will feature character shards for both Hulkbuster and Abomination, along with updates to gear for uh, rewards for Pass and Pass 3. And it looks like they've given up on Pass uh, Pass 4. And the, the data mine here shows for the second week is going to be... Uh, I think it's Icarus, uh, Icarus and Silver Centurion Iron Man costume. And that, it is a new costume in game. Uh, it's, it's slightly different. Instead of being gold, it's a little bit, it's silver, but it, it looks actually very similar to the nor normal Iron Man costume. Okay, let's move on uh, right here. Uh, we got Uniques. Oh, for Archangel and Zombie Army. So what's up with the raid orbs not being updated with a unique uh, Archangel? Can we expect these to be available or where are we going to be able to get them? And the only place that I've seen them is so far is in this special store, the presence store. And I don't believe it's showing up in my store, but in yesterday's video, I showed screenshots of the items showing up here uh, for the, the Chromium. Uh, I don't see it here. I, I feel like they're being... Uh, really stingy with this uh, uh, materials, and my best hope is that inside of the uh, the scourge event, these pieces will be in the milestones. We will have to wait and see. We've heard nothing like that. 
Uh, but I, I predicted this yesterday. I was not expecting not only to be no minion rework, but I was not expecting there to be the chromium, uh, which is for uh, Archangel and Zombie Iron Man. Hopefully you didn't take Archangel or Zombie Iron Man up to gear tier 16. If you did, then you might still have 18 of them available. I think I said that uh, when Zombie Iron Man came out. Also, scary questions about Apocalypse. And um, I'm not going to read all this post, but there's one part in here that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the whole year long to road Apocalypse is a really good thing. Is all going to be worth it. Of course, we don't know his kit, but I wonder if it matters. No matter how OP Apocalypse and 4Xmen are, what game modes will we use them in? And I think this is a good question. Campaigns. Uh, just like we're getting uh, remade hard ones, so nothing new. This seems unlikely for the team. Raids, nope. Different origins, correct. RTA, who plays RTA anyways, right? That's kind of what they say. War Crucible Blitz, maybe. But is it worth breaking up four really good teams for one god level team? And what my hope is, and what I'm thinking might happen, is that Apocalypse will be somewhat plug and play. And instead of uh, breaking up four really good teams, Apocalypse will plug in to the Gamma team just for war. In Crucible, Apocalypse will plug in into the Unlimited X-Men team just for Crucible and make that team better. We'll pull out, you know, maybe on this team here, you'll pull out, I don't know, She-Hulk. Maybe on this team right here, you'll pull out Phantom X. I don't know. And you'll put in Apocalypse and it'll make a better team. So that's what my hope is for this team. Now, let's move on a little bit here. We're going to look at some of the offers. This is an offer I purchased already. Uh, not a lot of good offers today, uh, but this one here I bought uh, just because the snowball is not a meaningful amount. I mean, the entire event to ma get max rewards is 750000 but we got training material, and I'm personally going through an extreme shortage on training materials. So we've got uh, $1 for one training materials, which is fine. Also, we've got, if you unlock Nemesis, we've got the offers for gold, uh, which is typically kind of like the baseline, you know, C standard, or, you know, if you do purchase gold, this is typically better than the normal offers for gold. 3.25 million gold plus 12 gold orbs for $30. Uh, here, right, if you're looking for T3 ability materials, this offer here will give anywhere from 350 to 400, plus a small amount of gold small amount of purple gear and also characters from year two. So if you're looking for T3 purple ability materials, you've got that right there for $5. We've got another uh, offer right here. I want to call him Hulkbuster. Doesn't he look like Hulkbuster with like a, a Ghost Rider head or something? Uh, a lot of people call him Ghostbuster. Uh, $10. This is uh, very similar to the $30 offer, 1 million gold and four gold orbs. And then we've got the training material and I might have to break down and buy this. I am completely starved and completely out of training materials. And this is typically the best way to purchase training materials if you're in the market for it. And there is the uh, corresponding $10 offer. All right, now we're at the end of the video. And let me say this, I really hope you liked today's video. And if you did like this video, you are in luck. For every single person that likes this video, you will be getting for free in your account an eight-star Wolverine. This is not a scam. It is a scam. All right, guys. Let me know what you think of the patch. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.